Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in a powerful series, and I know this message today is going to bless you in a rich way. So get ready. God has a great plan for your life. Check it out. We thank you for who you are, Father, as we come before you and preach your word, Father. I decrease, Father, that you increase, Father. Hide me behind the veil, Father, as we lift you up, Father, that you may be glorified and Satan may be terrified. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in his presence. Well, we're in the season. It's go time. I mean, it's time to go. You know, on my, my daily scripture, I put let's go 24, you know, and that's what I, I live by 24 hours a day. I wake up in the morning. I don't know what tomorrow going to bring. Yesterday is gone. It's like today I got these fresh 24, man. Lamentations let me know. My mercies are renewed every day. So I get a fresh start every morning. But today we're talking about it's go time on mission. It's time for us to get busy in mission. And so today we're talking about it's time to confess Christ. It is time for us as Christians to confess Christ on mission. And when I say confess Christ, I want to give you this story, to get, paint the picture to help you understand what I'm talking about. Picture you driving in a vehicle, and Christy Allen is driving. Hold on, that's right. All right, and Christy Allen, Bobby Floyd, Christy Allen, she got a heavy foot. And so Christy Allen is driving, right? And she's driving, and she's driving the way Christy drive, fast. And it's raining. It's dark. And she's speeding. And as she's going across the bridge, the bridge collapses. And Christy hits her brakes. She jumps out, hearts pounding, Cassidy hearts pounding. And they said, man, we almost, we almost died today. We almost died in this wreck today. And their hearts are pounding. And while they're having this conversation, here comes another car headed their way. They got two things they can do. They can be silent or they can do whatever possible to warn those people that there's danger ahead. It's the same way with confessing Christ. Same way with confessing Christ. The message today is a heaven or hell issue. Life or death issue. It's not a prosperity message to where you're going to leave out here thinking you're getting a lot of money. <laughs> Something way better than money. Peter says, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give to thee. And that's Jesus Christ. So today's message is a heaven or hell issue. And just like Christy them bridge collapsing, we can either keep silent and don't confess Christ, or we can warn everybody that we come in contact with that, you know what, this is a life or death issue for you to confess Christ as your personal savior. You see, I don't care who the person is. We are to ask them about their confession to Christ. You see, as Christians, we, we can say, um, we'll ask them, Do you, where you go to church at? What denomination are you? But the question is, have you confessed Christ as your personal savior? That's the question to be asking. Because guess what? Good people don't make it to heaven. Did y'all know that? I don't care how much good Anthony Johnson do. That does not get me to heaven. I can give everybody Gucci purses in here. <laughs> Wilda like that boy. You know, she like all that fashion stuff. <laughs> That's not going to get me to heaven. Good people don't make it. 
only those that confess redeemed people make it to heaven. And I'm stressing this point because to me, time is winding up. It may not look like it to you guys, but when I look around the world, it looks like Christ can return at any time. So we need to be about mission, telling people about Christ, that they confess Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, which brings us to our gospel lesson. And we're talking about confession. Romans 9 and 10 lets us know, in order to be saved, that we have to confess. It's not an option. Romans says, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is who he say he is, we shall be saved. That's no doubt about it, that we have to confess. That's the first step. I use the illustration in, in the first service of a baseball game, Tim, in our Christian walk. In the baseball game, you can stand to a mound and you can stand up and you can hit a home run out of the park. Crowd goes crazy. And you take off and you're running around to the bases and you're waving at everybody. First base, second base, third base, and you slide home. And the ref says, out. You look around and you wonder what happened. So you hit a home run but you miss first base. So you gotta touch all bases. And when it comes to our Christian walk, the first base is confessing Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That's the first base. And the reason why I said the first base is because, see, we, sometimes we can skip over first base and start doing the work of the ministry. We see how Christ move around, right? We see how the church function. So instead of confessing Christ, we can come and we can blend in and fit in, and it's all good. But not in Christ's eyes. We have to confess Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. So the first thing is confessing him. So Jesus is talking to his disciples about his journey. That's our gospel lesson. And he's walking with his disciples, and they're, he didn't, they didn't see him perform miracles and do all these wonderful things. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jesus pops this question on them. And they're walking, and he look at the disciples, he says, what are they saying about me out there? What's the tea? What are they saying about me? And Peter, being loud mouth, outspoken, speaks for everybody. Peter says, you're the son of the living God. Peter's confession that he was the son of the living God. That was personal. That was to Peter. It's the same way to us today. I don't know what Christ is to you, but who is he to you? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? That's the first step. Who is Christ to you? Have we accepted him in our heart? Have we confessed him with our mouth? So Peter goes on to say, Jesus goes on, he lets him know that the first thing is, it's a personal confession. That nobody can stand, at the end of life, nobody is going to stand before judgment and say, you know what, Anthony was a good man, he was a good Christian man, and he believed in you. I got to stand by myself. And each and every one of us have to stand by ourselves in making that confession of Jesus Christ. So the first thing is confessing Jesus Christ. And he's telling his disciples this because he's knowing he's getting ready to go off the scene. And he's going to need his disciples to be his hands and feet. And just like he's using his, used his disciples, he used each and every one of us to be his hands and feet to spread this gospel. So not only did he tell them that the first thing is confessing, but then he let them know that 
following after him, there's a cost that have to be paid. Even though he paid the ultimate cost, there's still a cost that we have to pay, but it's okay. You see, it, what I like about this text is because it reminds me of our day. Because you see, Peter is gung-ho right now. Peter said, hey, you're the son of the living God. He said, didn't nobody tell you that but my father. But then when Jesus began to, begin to explain the difficult things he was going to have to go through. See, in our Christian journey, there's going to be some difficult days ahead. But still, are we willing to confess Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? Will we stand up before the world and say, I confess Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? So he began to tell his disciple, the son of man is going to be beaten. He's going to be this. He's going to die. And the third day, he's going to raise again. That was too much for Peter. Peter said, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you imagine Peter pulled Jesus to the side and says, and rebuked, rebuked Jesus? Peter didn't know any better at the time. And Jesus had to rebuke him because Peter didn't understand what he was saying. It's all a part of the plan. Peter didn't get the big picture that the crucifixion, only Satan would want that to stop. That's why he called him Satan, because the power was coming after the resurrection. So, after getting Peter in line, he looks at his disciples and he tells them the cost of confessing Christ. He says, whoever wants to be one of my disciples, this is what we must do. Deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow him. That's where some people stop and have a problem with. Because confessing Christ is one thing. I see people do it all the time. I see people say, I see people win awards and they confess. They say they confess Christ as their personal Savior, but their lifestyle says differently. But he said, if you want to be my disciple, we must deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow him. In other words, the life we live, we don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for Jesus Christ. The things we used to do, because of change in heart, we don't want to do anymore. The places we, do, we, need, we used to go, guess what? We don't have the desire to go there anymore. That's if you want to be his disciple. So he let us know that, you know, being my disciple, it's going to cost. You might lose some friends along the way when you're standing for Christ. Guess what? You might lose some family members when you're standing for Christ. You might even lose church members when you're standing for Christ. Because when we're standing for Christ, we're standing on the truth, meaning all of his word, not just some of his word. The reason why I'm putting it this way is because people will confess Jesus Christ, and they'll water it down. And they'll water it down, and they'll say things like, well, this is what he meant to say in the word. No, no, what he said in the word is what he said in the word. The words of God is yes and amen. There is no way around the gospel. It is what it is, and it's there to help us along the way. So it's up to us to confess Christ. It's up to us. I'm closing my sermon right now. It's up to us to confess Christ. See, there's a world out there that they don't know what truth is. We see here in the end in Mark chapter 9, the third point, he, our call of confession to, of Christ is to the world. You see the story in the beginning, it started out with two people in a car wreck and they were about to die. But it wasn't about those two. It was about the people that was coming. They, too, was headed for danger. What it looked like if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and our brother is headed to hell. 
Do that sit well with our spirit? There's a world out there, y'all, that don't know what truth is. Pilate even said, Pilate said, man, what is truth? When it was time to crucify Jesus, Pilate said, what is truth? The Pharisees saying this, so and so, everybody saying all this, I don't have no fault in this man, I ain't got nothing to do with him. It's the same way now. When we step out today, you can ask people, what is truth? You know what some people will say? According to what? Because what we see is man doing what's right in his own eyes. But it's up to us to confess Christ as our personal Savior. And how do we confess Christ? It's how we carry ourselves in our everyday life, man. Because you know what? Some people, they're not going to pick up a Bible and read it. But majority of people won't pick up the Bible and read it. But they will, will read you. They'll read you up and down. Especially when we're going through. Oh, let trouble come our way. COVID, oh my goodness, during COVID, everybody was watching the Christians. <laughs> they knew the world was going to go crazy. Let's see what these Christians do. The world is watching us. The world won't answer us. We got them. And it's Jesus. So let's be caught giving out Jesus to the world. Confessing Christ on our jobs. When we walk into the office, you know, people that use foul language, they should stop cussing when you walk around. But if they're comfortable cussing while you're walking around, that shouldn't be right. But you know what I tell them? When I'm gone, Jesus is still going to be here. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about him. But confessing Christ, man, everywhere we go, the way we carry ourselves, people are watching us. We was at the football game the other night, and I seen, it was like, the Ross, it was the Rossbergs, big family. It was the McDonald's, big family. All these big fam they're all Christians, right? And so I'm speaking to all these people, people that I know in the, in the stands. And I'm like, they go to my church and they go to my church. You know, that's a form of witnessing. It's how we carry ourselves. Whatever platform that you got, are you representing Jesus on it? When people approach you, do they know that it's Jesus that they're going to get? The world needs to know that it's time to confess Christ. I used to, I tell this story all the time that I always say I was going to wait till I get older and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Man, I could have died in my sins. Sometimes we, we put in our mind, we're going to wait till we get right. Or, you know, uh, Christ is returning Someday we don't know when, and I hope I'm right, hope I'm ready. Man, there is no guarantee. I was at a funeral yesterday here, young lady, 29 years old. Then there was another funeral of the young man, this young, young man in his 20s probably, 30s maybe. And we talk about the world coming to an end and to be ready. Those two funerals yesterday, guess what? They world came to an end. No day, no hour is guaranteed to us. Will we be ready when Christ returns? When Christ returns, what will we be doing? Have we ever thought about that? When we talk about confession, confessing Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, there's a change that should happen in our life. We call it a 180. That way we make a turn and go the opposite direction. And that direction is the direction of Jesus Christ. So, our three take-home points. When I confess Jesus Christ, 
when I confess Christ to others, there's three things they can do uh, that, that will happen. When I confess Jesus Christ, others will receive God's, receive the good news of salvation. When I confess Jesus Christ, that's good news of salvation. What better news is it that confessing Christ that you will be with him in eternity, for eternity? It don't get any better than that. We can become so desensitized and think that this is our home, and it's not. Our home awaits us. So when we confess Christ to others, they will receive the good news of salvation. Scripture says if we declare with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our heart, that we will be saved. Salvation is found only in him. There is no other way. It's in him. Salvation is found in him to be saved. Secondly, when I confess Christ to others, when I confess Christ to others, they will experience God's forgiveness and renewal. When I confess Christ to others, they will experience the forgiveness that God gives us. You see the world out there? Some people feel that God will not forgive me. I've heard people tell me, Pastor Anthony, you just don't know what I've done. God won't forgive me. That is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. God will forgive you. This is what the scripture says about it. The scripture says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive you of all your sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. In other words, whatever it is that you've done, he will clean you up and make you look like you never did it. That's how awesome God is. And the world needs to know this, that guess what? He will forgive you of whatever it is you've done. Thirdly, when I confess Christ to others, they will gain the power to overcome, to overcome Christ's victory. See, Christ has overcome this world. We look around the world and feel like Satan is winning, and it looked like he's winning in the world eyes. But we know how the story ends. We win in the end. But we can win right now once we confess Christ as our personal Savior. We own his team, man. It's like being on the winning team of a fixed fight. On a winning team, you know you're going to win. Only thing you have to do, as I said last week, is trust the process. We know we're going to win. Confess Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Invite people on the team, on the winning team, because we win in the end. It says, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Mm. Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And there you have it. Those are the ones who overcome the world. Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So whatever the world sends our way, guess what? We are overcomers. We are overcomers. So as I close today, the appeal is to everybody. This appeal today is a confession appeal. appeal. Time for confession of Christ. Stand into your feet. I'm going to pray for the church. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes. And every head bowed. I want you to just think for a moment. Think about confession. Think about eternity. Think about
if something were to happen to you before you make it home today, where will your final destination be? Will it be heaven? Or will it be hell? The Bible lets us know that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, that we will be saved. And heaven will be our home. So if you're listening to me today, watching by Facebook or online, this appeal to you today. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you haven't done it, today is the day. Accept him in your heart. Confess him with your mouth, and you will be saved. He said, Pastor, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Well, if you don't know, come down. We can talk to you. We can walk you through it. It's just that important. You might be here today and you might say, you know, I've confessed Christ as my personal Savior. But in my journey, you know, I kind of got laxed. I don't witness the way I used to. And I want that fire back in my life. That I can go and I confess Christ boldly. Like Peter did in Acts. As he went forth and he began to confess Christ boldly that's you today I want to pray with you on any of those appeals if you never accepted Christ you can meet me right here if you want to go deeper in Christ you can meet me right here at the altar I'm just throwing an appeal out and father you know the hearts of your people you know right where they at when they confess you whether they come whether they stand you know their hearts so father we just thank you and we bless you now we thank you for the word that came forth on today father we know that your word will continue to work even when we're done speaking so, Father, we just pray right now for those that are listening. May something may be said to draw them closer to you, Lord, to confess you as their Lord and Savior over their life, to walk with you, to live for you, to serve you all the days of our lives. Now, we pray for this church, Lord, and every church that's preaching Jesus Christ. May we continue to keep our eyes fixed on you in everything that we do, Lord. Help us to not grow weary in well-doing. We pray for those having birthdays and anniversaries. Continue to bless them in the very best way, Lord. We thank you for all our visitors here today, Lord. We know it's not by accident. We hopefully something was said today make them feel at home to want to get to know you better to this, this maybe feel like a place that they can thrive in you Lord because that's what it's all about that close relationship with you now Father we pray for this world that we live in let us be the saints Father confessing Christ to the world this unjust world that when it looks like the enemy is winning, we know that we win in the end. And not only in the end, Father, in your word, you said that your kingdom shall come right here and right now so we can walk in that victory. We walk as the children of God that you have called us to be. Now we close out with the prayer that you taught us to pray, and that prayer is, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I pray that today's message bless you in a rich way. We are all about being committed to the mission, being committed to Jesus, being committed to this life in him. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. Or we'd have, love to have you join us on Sunday mornings live on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. We come on 11 o'clock Central Time. So God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again soon.